Got another question for the Synoptic Questions playlist. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So first thing I've got to do is give the systematic name for compound A. You'll notice I've highlighted the OH group. This is going to be called a hydroxy group in this compound. So essentially what we've got is butanol with a hydroxy group on carbon 1, 2, 3. So it's called 3-hydroxybutanol. What type of reactions take in place? Well, the easiest way to think about it is you've got two reactants have become one product, and that's an addition reaction. Moving on to part three. So the first bit, we've got to complete this equilibrium and label up the conjugate acid-base pairs as those labels there. So you'll notice I've highlighted the um, OH minus ion, the hydroxide ion. That's obviously a base. So it's going to accept an H plus ion from the ethanol. In the process, that's going to form H2O. So there's a pair. So this is obviously the base of this pair. So I'm just calling this pair one. And this is the acid of pair one. Moving on to the ethanol. So this is obviously donated a proton to the hydroxide ion. So this is going to act as an acid. So this is the acid of the other pair. So I'm calling this pair two now because I've used the ones already. So when ethanol donates that proton, it becomes this negatively charged ion here. So I'm calling that B2. And I just want to say as well, that's also a possible answer for B2 because you don't have to lose this H here. You could have lost one of the CH3Hs. So that's fine as well. So moving on to the second part of part three, we've got to come up with the equation for step two. So I've written up the overall equation. Basically, when we add steps one and two together, we need to generate the overall equation. So the first thing we can see is that we're going to need another mole of CH3CHO. We've only got one in step one, but there's two in the overall equation. Next thing we'll look at is, well, we need to get rid of the OH minus ion, the H2O, and this ion here. So the way we do that is we need to put one of those on the other side, on the right-hand side of step two. And we need to put one each of those on the left-hand side of step two. And so the only other thing we need now is we need to make the product, which obviously we haven't got yet in either of the steps, so that's going to go there. So to help me explain the last bit, I've got the original equation on the screen. So what I'm going to do is lasso out the O and the H. And essentially, I'm going to take that H and put it on there to generate that OH group. You can see there's that hydrogen there. And then this CH2CHO group is joined onto here. So that's how I'm thinking about it. And I'm just going to apply that to the propanone scenario. So literally all I've done there is change the hydrogen to a CH3 group and obviously both of the reactants. So here we've now got a CH3 group, likewise here. Moving on to part B now. So obviously that's quite open-ended this question. There's loads of possible mechanisms you could use so long as it's um, an electrophilic reaction. One have obviously got to be aliphatic and one's got to be aromatic. So I've chosen one of each. I'll give you the other options, but I'm not going to go through every single mechanism. Otherwise, I'll be here forever. Okay, so the first thing we need to say really is what is an electrophile? An electrophile is an electron pair acceptor. So starting with the aliphatic example, obviously it's going to be an alkene. You could react it with a halogen or you could react it with a hydrogen halide. Now, I've gone for a hydrogen halide example, and I'm choosing HBr as my hydrogen halide. The other thing I want to say as well is keep things simple. So, obviously, ethene is the simplest alkene, so I'm going to use that. And it avoids the hassle sort of later on in the mechanism of explaining major and minor products. Okay, so what's going to happen? Well, obviously, we've got a dipole across the HBr bond. It's this way around, delta plus on the hydrogen, delta minus on the bromine. So we take a pair of electrons from the pi bond in the double bond. So we just draw a curly arrow from the middle of one of the bonds in the double bond to that slightly positive hydrogen. That's going to repel the electron pair in the HBr bond completely onto the bromine. And it's going to break that bond there by heterolytic fission. 
So the upshot of that is we generate this carbo cation and also a bromide ion and then we just need to take a curly arrow from the lone pair on the bromide ion to the positive carbon. So the only other thing I think we should say here is the name of the mechanism. So this is electrophilic addition and we may as well identify the electrophile as well, the electron pair acceptor. It's obviously the hydrogen of the HBr molecule. Moving on to the aromatic example, so we're talking about benzene reacting with either nitric acid, so nitration of benzene, halogenation, so reaction with a halogen, the alkylation reaction, so where benzene reacts with a haloalkane, or acylation, where benzene reacts with an acyl chloride. I'm just again going to go for a simple example, so I'm going to go for the nitric acid one. Okay, so the first part of the mechanism is the reaction of the concentrated nitric acid with concentrated sulfuric acid. This is going to act as a catalyst. We'll show that at the end of the mechanism. That generates the all-important electrophile, the nitronium ion, which I'll label up at the end. It also makes an H2O molecule and an HSO4- ion. So if we then bring in benzene and the electrophile, we need to take a pair of electrons from the delocalized ring of pi electrons to the electrophile. So we show that with a curly arrow which originates from this circle here. That's going to create this intermediate here. So we show the hydrogen that was already there, but it's not shown on the benzene ring, but we show it now. Obviously, there's the NO2 group attached. We've now got a partial pi electron cloud with a positive charge in, and it's open where the substitution's taken place. Next thing we need to do is lose this hydrogen. So that's done by taking the pair of electrons from this bond back into the ring, which generates the nitrobenzene and an H plus ion. And then all we need to do now is show the sulfuric acid's role as a catalyst. So we take the H plus ion and the HSO4 minus ion formed in that first step and bring them together. So the only thing left to do now is, like we did with the aliphatic mechanism, we'll name the mechanism. So this is electrophilic substitution. And I think it would also be good to identify the electrophile. So in this case, it's the NO2 plus ion.